Greetings and welcome to an introduction to using Microsoft Excel for descriptive statistics. My name is Jeremy Shear and I'm one of the experts here at BrainMass. Uh, in this presentation, I will explore the use of Microsoft Excel to properly set up data charts and then manipulate them for better description of the data itself. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at the notion of descriptive statistics and what descriptive statistics attempt to tell us and work to better understand how and when they are used and how they help us understand our data better. Uh, next, we'll dive into Microsoft Excel by learning how to properly format data sets and then create descriptive graphs and statistics charts that help us to better understand both the central tendency of the data as well as its dispersion. So what are descriptive statistics? Well, descriptive statistics help us to uh, really identify the shape of the data that we have collected. Uh, and, and this shape includes not only several different measures of kind of the uh, what we call the central tendency uh, or where the, the majority of the data rests, uh, but it also helps us to identify dispersion around that central uh, majority of the data. Uh, whether or not the data leans to the positive side or the negative side, which we call skewing, uh, whether or not it has dramatic outliers, or whether or not it's a very very tight grouping around that central mean. Uh, these are all things that can help us better understand uh, the data that we're looking at. When we start with data, we see something like this, uh, random numbers, uh, although they may, may not be so random, uh, as in this example where I've selected a, a sample of uh, M&Ms from a variety of bags and what I've done is I've counted each of the bags to determine how many M&Ms are actually in the bag. Uh, well, when we look at this data, what we see, uh, what the human brain sees is a variety of numbers. Uh, and these numbers really don't tell us anything about uh, you know, how many M&Ms are, are in a typical bag of M&Ms uh, or anything like that. Um, so by better understanding the descriptive statistics, specifically the central tendency and the amount of variance from that central tendency, we can start to consider if this is a normal distribution or if it is somehow skewed uh, or off-center from what we would expect it to be. So uh, the questions that we can start to answer will include things like, uh, what does our data set represent? Is the majority of our data centrally located? In all types of research, whether it's business, scientific, social scientific, or psychological, we can use this data to determine some specific things. Uh, specifically, we can identify if our population uh, is a normal distribution uh, or if there's some kind of abnormal distribution around our population. We can identify the average results of our data and we can use that to make determinations regarding how that compares to the population overall. And we can identify any extreme conditions that may exist in the specific sample that we have collected. In determining how to use data sets in Microsoft Excel, uh, we have to start by understanding how to set up our data in Microsoft Excel. One of the common mistakes people make when they first start using uh, software such as Excel to manipulate data is not laying out the data properly, clearly, and, and, and in a manner that's easy to understand. Uh, so what we're going to do is take a look at the proper way uh, to set up data in Microsoft Excel uh, by creating a table. So what I've done here, you, as you can see, is I've created a data layout in Microsoft Excel. And in my data layout, uh, I've not only included this time the number of candies that were in each bag of M&Ms from my sample, uh, but I also included the distribution of each color for each bag. In other words, I opened up 55 bags of candy, which was a wonderful exercise, and I counted how many blue M&Ms and how many orange M&Ms and how many green, yellow, red, and brown M&Ms, and I listed that for each one of my individual samples. So what I have is a sample collection of 55 bags of M&Ms, and what I want to determine over the course of time is whether or not this sample that I've collected is representative of the population of all M&M candies uh, according to the M&M Mars company who makes M&M. 